Today we are going to discuss the use and the value of urban planning. Why do we need urban planners? A city government usually includes sectoral bureaus that manage individual sectors such as transport, water and sanitation, land, housing, commercial, industrial and public semi-public use. Good sectoral management is indispensable but it is not enough. Urban planners should work across sectors. So urban planner is not limited to a particular sector. He has to work across different sectors. By contrast with the sector managers, urban planners are supposed to work across different sectors. For this reason, their contribution to the efficiency of a city is unique. Unfortunately, urban planners often concentrate on planning land use in isolation from other municipal sectors. They do not get involved in the infrastructure planning. So there might be different parastatal agencies which are working in different sectors like water and sanitation, water supply department and transport department. So there might be other department working in the sector which are in these they are working individually. So there is a lack of coordination between different agencies working in the planning field. Examples of cross-sectoral problems. A shortage of housing may be responsible for overcrowding which in turn may create traffic congestion. So we will see that one problem can lead to another problem. The solution might be to increase the supply of housing but it is a cross sectoral approach rather than widening a street which is a sectoral approach so we have to concentrate on both we have to supply housing and then we have to improve the road bring efficient public transport mass rapid transit system Lack of investment in water supply in suburban areas may create an urban land shortage, which in turn may lead to housing shortage in high rent. So the solution to lower rent might be to build new water mains supply lines in suburban across sectoral approach. Rather than building new housing project, which is a sectoral approach. So to solve the problem of housing, in suburban area, we have to provide better facilities and services in the suburban area so that there is a increase in the supply of the housing, better housing. There are attempts to minimize cost within sector often leads to the wrong decision. So you might have seen that when there is a reduction in the cost in one sector, it might lead to a wrong decision in another sector. For instance, a transport department may attempt to minimize its budget expenditure by avoiding building expensive overreaches. In doing so, the municipality may lose the asset represented by the land across the bridge. The value of the land may accessible by the breeze might be several order of the magnitude the cost of the breeze. So in the already developed areas, when you develop new infrastructures like over release, underpass or widen the road, so the cost of the land will be very high. So this might create problem. So there should be a cost benefit analysis. So maximizing the benefit and minimizing the cost. Good management practices consist in maximizing the difference between the cost and benefits, not in minimizing only the cost. One of the most practical way of measuring the benefit from the infrastructure investment or regularity change is to measure changes in value of the land. And rent. 
urban planners are uniquely qualified to evaluate investment benefits when they understand the mechanism of real estate market. Because urban planners have a comprehensive knowledge of the urban system, they know when one system changes there is an effect on the other system and then they are in a better position to take better decisions. Reality versus best practices. In reality, in many cities across the world, planners tend to focus on the design and the land use plans in isolation from other sector. We have already discussed this. Ignore the reaction of the real estate market to the shortage and supply or oversupply of the housing that may unknowingly contribute to create more problems. This explains why there is so many planning failures and why the sectoral management approach is more common than cross-sectoral planning. Because in most of the government department you will find that there is a sectoral planning. They will provide budget for the road infrastructure, they provide budget and planning for the water supply network, but they won't provide a cross-sectoral approach like comprehensive a special planning approach. Cities, success and failures of the urban planning. So cities in high income countries often appear to be better planned than cities in lower income countries. However, it is not always the case. There are history of planning success and failures in every countries of the world, rich or poor. We can learn from the success and failures stories, but there are so no directly transferable models. So we have to adopt the models which are more successful, but before we cannot directly adopt. We have to adjust, accommodate, we have to customize the model which can be applied in our context. Examples of successful planning in Western Europe in America and cities. In Western Europe cities, we will find that protecting historical neighborhoods while maintaining their economic vitality is a visible factor in their urban planning approach. You will also find that there is a linking of economic regions with a dense and efficient network of public transport. So you will find that they have very good and efficient public transport network which interlink different economic regions. In American cities you will find that there is a maintaining of competitive housing construction industry responsive to consumer demand. So there won't be a very large scarcity of the housing in American society. They provide very good supply. They have a very good supply mechanism of housing. Unlike in our country where there is a large demand of the housing, affordable housing, low income housing, but it is not so. Reducing per capita per car pollution by imposing strictly enforced pollutant emission standards. So you will find that in America they have a strong regulation for controlling the congestion like uh, they also charge um, peak pricing um, peak pricing during the peak hour and also charge for the emission of the pollutant so there is a very good mechanism of controlling Examples of planning failures in Western Europe and American cities. 
In Western European cities, you will find that Parler tried to limit the growth of the capital cities like London and Paris, but it did not work because most of the towns will have organic growth model. The proportion of the trip using public transport keep decreasing in spite of efforts of planning to increase it. Because when the income of the public increases, the general per capita income in increases, people try to have their own cars, own vehicles, private vehicles, rather than going for public transport unless there is a segregated lens like BRTS. If the private vehicles get can struck in traffic, then they will prefer to go through public transport. So we should dedicate more lanes for the public transport and few lanes for private vehicles so that they can get stuck in the traffic and then they can be motivated to for using public transport. In American cities, many city centers are losing jobs and people in spite of planners for to revitalize them. The proportion of the trip using public transport keep decreasing in spite of large investment in public transport like light rail or metro. Because of the mixed use development preference, people like to work in nearby areas in the same, like a, there can be floor wise uses like at one floor there can be commercial use at another there should be recreational so there will be decrease in the trip because in american cities you will also find that they are going for transit oriented development so they are concentrating their development in a, a specific area so that there is a decrease in the number of the trips from home to work. There are six steps for successful planning. So first we have to define priority. Priority which will be defined through our objectives of the planning. Then we have to develop a strategies to achieve those objectives in a time frame manner. Identify and quantify inputs, what inputs we can take from current situation. Identify and quantify outputs, what benefits we can provide to the users, customers through our innovation and development. Project and then monitor outcome. First we have to simulate the planning model so that what changes it will bring we can find it. Then we have to calculate and then monitor citywide impact and compare to the objectives. Then after implementing the model of the development we have to assess the, its impact and how we are going to achieve the our objectives or not. So defining priority objectives will depends on various factors like increasing supply of new housing like in case of Delhi, developing a strategy, develop infrastructure to increase land supply. This strategy can be adopted in the fringe area in the suburban areas. Identify and quantify inputs. Land for road ri roads right away, cost of civil works. So we have to identify in which area there will be need for widening of the ro road, in which area there will be reconstruction of the supply and utility lines like when there was a construction of metro lines in different part of Delhi there was also 
a cost involved for civil works, which were for relaying and uh, readjusting the existing supply network, like the water supply, sewerage network, drainage. Identify and quantify output. The length of the road and network to be built. In which area it has to be built. How wide it has to be built. How we can use the better technologies for making better roads. And then there will be project outcomes. Which will be in the term of area and the cost of the land developed density and the number of dwelling unit which can be increased in those areas like uh, after the construction of the metro in different areas you will find that there is a very large increase in the construction dwelling the number of the dwelling unit like uh, people are making their buildings multi stories so that they can accommodate more dwelling unit Evaluate citywide impact compared with the objective. So changes in the land and housing prices, percentage change increase in the new housing, how our approach of developing new road network, new infrastructure is leading to the increase in the housing supply. The step 6 describes a work could be used for planning, regulation, reforms, infrastructure investment, or local tax reforms. The step 5 projecting outcome is a way to anticipate the reaction of the market to the planned project. And the step 6 will validate the efficiency of the strategy. It is possible to plan projects or reform which appear successful in isolation but have no impact at the city level. Many government housing projects are unfortunately of this last type. Like they appear to be successful in isolation but overall their impact is zero because there is no reduction in the housing demand and housing supply is at a very low pace. So they are, it is not satisfying the need of the consumer. Most of the planning forms in the government sector, they do not follow these steps. Master plan often contain only objectives and strategies and nothing else. Sometimes there are list of inputs and outputs without clear objectives. Most of the time anticipated outcomes and value of the impact are missing. Success can be measured only when impacts are compared to the objectives. So we have to assess our success based on the defined objectives for which we were planning, we were working. The most current weakness in flowing the six steps are lack of clear objectives. Most of the departments in the government who are working in the public works, in the planning and development projects, they lack the clear objectives. The strategy is inconsistent with the city's spatial structure. Inconsistency between objectives and current land use laws, infrastructure investment programs and taxation you will find that a large scale housing was developed in Yamuna Bank Ozone which was restricted under the master plan. So it is a special case for the Commonwealth Games. They have developed the housing in the riverbed zone. So there is a inconsistency between the objectives of the master plan and the strategies, infrastructure development, which was done for the Commonwealth Games for a few months, but now it is being used by the people residing there, those who got flats there.
strategies at war with trends in consumer demand. In Delhi, most of the consumers are demanding for affordable housing. But in the real estate market, they are providing high income housing groups. Most of the, they will supply for HIG, MIG flats because they can get more benefits. A sense of financial resource to back projected investment. Implicit cost are affordable to the consumers. Lack of regular monitoring of outcome and input is also there. So many of the what planners should do to increase chances of successful implementation. So planners should first look at issues across different sectors. Do not look at land use in isolation from the other sectors and from real estate market. Monitor real estate market and interpret price signals. Conduct cost benefit analysis and use anticipated rent value as proxy for benefits. Investigate possible negative side effects of regulation and infrastructure development. Constantly monitor urban indicators like density, number, location of buildings, permit, traffic flows, land prices, rents, and others. So for successful implementation of a plan, the planners need to flow a different approach. They should adopt a cross-sectoral comprehensive planning approach which should start from setting up well-defined objectives, then devising strategies, then creating different models based on the taking inputs from the current scenario, evaluating the projected outputs, simulate the output of the development model and then monitor its impact on the overall development of the city so that we can achieve the final ultimate objectives of the development thank you thank you for listening